Our passage this morning is from Isaiah 51, verse 12 through 16. I'm going to read out of the ESV. I, I am He who comforts you. Who are you that you are afraid of man who dies, of the Son of Man who is made like grass, and have forgotten the Lord your Maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth? And you fear continually all the day because of the wrath of the oppressor, when he sets himself to destroy... And where is the wrath of the oppressor? He who is bowed down shall speedily be released. He shall not die and go down to the pit. Neither shall his bread be lacking. I am the Lord your God, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand, establishing the heavens and laying the foundations of the earth and saying to Zion, You are my people. The Word of the Lord. Sometimes a simple reminder can make all the difference. Um, I'm going to tell you about, a, about my first semester here at Austin Grad. Um, some of you know I come from a, a background in mathematics. That was my bachelor's degree work. And uh, coming here for a degree in theology is a world apart from mathematics. Um, I think during my entire high school and, and uh, bachelor's degree, I may have written two or three papers. The longest paper I'd ever written was five pages long, and uh, I hated them, and I was scared of them. Uh, fear, fear was tied to writing papers. Um, and so when I came here for this degree, my first semester, I had not looked into what, uh, what a theology degree entailed. I'd really not done a lot. I just felt like this was where I was supposed to be and kind of just went after it. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't too long into the semester that uh, one of my papers was a 20-page paper that had been assigned. I had, you know, another half dozen big papers and a ton of small ones. You know, right around the half the semester mark, right before midterms are there, work's piling on, papers are piling on. The papers that I'm working on aren't coming together. I don't know what I'm doing. I, and, and the truth is fear set in. I, anxiety hit me, fear hit me, and I just didn't know that I would even survive. I, I, I at one point was sure that I would fail and I wouldn't make it. And uh, at one point it got so bad, the anxiety, that I couldn't even do any work because I had so much work to do. I felt like doing one thing was just not doing anything else. And, and, I, and I couldn't do anything. And I, I, was, I was just sitting there and I didn't know what, what would happen or what I would do. Um, but, it was, but I endured. I, I made it through and it was because of one simple reminder. And it's a simple reminder that um, we all know, you know, whenever you hear some kind of simple reminder that that reminds you of something that the fear, you know, you block those things out, you forget. But the reminder was, you know, hey, as long as you do the best work you can do, leave the results to the results. You know, just if you work as hard as you can work and do the best you can do, then you can't, you can't be upset at the results because you did your best work. And it was this little reminder. I mean, I knew that reminder. You know, I knew what that, I knew the truth of that. But in the, in the midst of the anxiety and the fear, um, I wasn't thinking about that. All I could see is this pile of work. But that little reminder got me just to put my nose to the to the stone again and just push through. And, uh, and I made it to the end of the semester. And um, not that the other semesters haven't been also very difficult, but that one was truly uh, a test. It was a trial for me. And that simple reminder uh, you know, gave me exactly what I needed to get through. The purpose of this passage is a simple reminder for the Judean exiles. And though it's a simple reminder, sometimes it's all that's needed. In Israel's past, God had rescued them from slavery, made a covenant with them, and gave them a land However, generations pass, the covenant is broken, the children of Israel are sent into, out of their land into exile. While in exile, will the children of Israel lose hope? Will they endure? They need a word of comfort. Now in our passage, the Israelites being referenced aren't all of Israel. It's not a random selection of exiled Israel either. Earlier in this chapter, they're specifically referred to as those who pursue righteousness, who seek the Lord, a, pe a people in whose heart is God's word, God's law. Here the prophet is specifically addressing this remnant. Now in the verses leading up to our passage, the remnant is addressing their God and specifically they're addressing the God who rescued their ancestors from Egyptian slavery. They call for the arm of the Lord to wake up as in the days of old, the God who dried up the sea for the redeemed to pass over. Though they're in exile, separated from their inheritance, the prophet says that the ransom of the Lord shall return. They will again come to Zion with singing. It's a promise of returning to the land, 
When that happens, they will obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. But what about before that happens? At the moment, they're not experiencing joy and gladness. At the moment, some are lacking food. Some are held captive. Some are being oppressed by their captors. They are afraid, and they need comfort. They need a word to help them endure the trial. And so the prophet brings them a word of comfort. In our passage, in our passage God is speaking. To bring comfort, God gives them a reminder, and He reminds them of two things. First, God reminds them of who He is. In the verses leading up to the passage, these Israelites remember the God who saved their ancestors from Egyptian slavery, and that's good. But God wants to remind them of even greater acts of power. God says, Why are you afraid of these men? They come and go like grass. Yet I am the Creator, the one who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. I'm the one who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. You know, your captors may have an army, but my name is Jehovah of armies. God reminds them of who He is. But who He is isn't the only thing that He reminds them of. To know how great and powerful God is by itself doesn't necessarily do someone any good. Why? Because if the God of all creation is against you, that could actually be pretty scary news. And so the, the second thing He reminds them of is just as important as the first. And so after reminding them of who He is, He reminds them of who they are. He says to them, I have put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand. You are my people. What more is needed? The God who not only has the power to deliver from Egyptian slavery, but is the actual creator of the heavens and the earth, He calls them His people. If that God is for you, why be afraid of your human captors? Why be afraid of the conditions of exile? Comfort is given by reminding them of who God is and who they are. Over the next week, many Christians will celebrate holidays, some Passover, some Easter. And this is the perfect time for us to be reminded of who God is and who we are. Our passage reminds us of the powerful Creator God who stretches out the heavens and lays the foundations of the earth and who calls this faithful remnant of Israel His people. However, during the, this week, we should all be reminded of another characteristic of this God. The Passover and resurrection of Christ reminds us of a God who, after creating, doesn't abandon His people to their own mess, but He rescues His people through the death and resurrection of His Son. And after rescue, He promises recreation with a new heavens and a new earth. In this act, we see a beautiful picture of who God is, a God of rescue and recreation. But just like in our passage, knowing who God is alone isn't enough. Because if you're not included in the people that God rescued, there is no hope. And there is no comfort. And so the reminder doesn't end there. After we're reminded of who God is, we're then reminded of who we are. Now in our passage, God refers to the faithful, this faithful, faithful remnant of Israel as His people. However, the apostles remind us that, uh, that it's not just Israel that God included in His rescue mission of Christ crucified, but that all of humanity was included in the rescue. For the apostles, this act of God is the defining act of His love. Therefore, in the Passover and resurrection of Christ, we can see exactly who we are, and in fact, who all of humanity is. We are beloved of God, loved of God. And if we live our lives in light of the fact that we are beloved of God and included in this rescue mission, then we have nothing in this life to fear. Therefore, today, the reminder is who God is and the reminder of who we are. This week, we enter a time of celebration. Easter Sunday is a time when the churches will be filled with many additional attendees, some who seldom hear this good news. Once we've been comforted and strengthened in our faith with the reminder of who God is and who we are, let's continue to partner with God in His rescue mission by reminding others around us of who God is as creator and rescuer and recreator and reminding them of who they are as beloved of God and included in that rescue mission. Thank you.